Father, may the light of your word shine true in our hearts. We ask that you'd come in the abundant power of your Holy Spirit, that you'd sweep through this building, changing all our hearts and minds into your likeness, that our eyes would be opened, that we would see Jesus, our ears opened, that we would hear Jesus, our hearts opened, that we would receive Jesus, and our lives opened to be transformed by Jesus. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, as I said to the uh, children a few moments ago before they went out uh, of church to Children's Church, over the next six weeks, we're going to be looking at the armor of God and the different parts of it uh, and how they're there for our protection. They're there to help us through life's journey and how that the Apostle Paul encourages us to put them on us. If you have a Bible near you and you want to open it up and look at the passage with us, we're looking at Ephesians chapter 6, and we're going to be looking at this passage, as I say, over the next six weeks. Ephesians 6, looking really at verses 10 through to 20. The Apostle Paul is no easy, uh, come easy, go easy writer. He tells us things that are for our own good. He shares things with the church that makes them uncomfortable, but he also shares things with the church which are there primarily for our own good and our own well-being. The mind is a wonderful thing, and it's something that I was trying to, to, to simplify as best as I could for the kids this morning, but the mind, the human mind, is beyond understanding, and I don't think we will ever fully understand its full workings. I know that there are surgeons and specialists and professionalists who, who make their, 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 their life's gain to understand the mind. And, you know, we've advanced so much in technology and science and in medical uh, advances into to what the brain is like, but will we ever fully understand what God is doing in and through us? But why is the armor of God so important? Why is the armor necessary? Well, as we were thinking about the, uh, with the children about why is a helmet necessary, an armor is, is necessary. For those of you who are motorbike riders or love that sort of sport, you'll understand that you need the leathers and you need the protective gear uh, to keep you safe when you're on the bicycle and to try and damage limitation as much as possible if you should happen to have an accident. And then you think of people that are riding horses and they have all the special armor that they put on their bodies to keep them safe. Think of our police force and our army and how that they have their bulletproof vests and their special riot helmets for those really turbulent times in society. And you know, it's all there to keep them safe. But why do we as Christians need to have an armor? Why has Paul told us to put on the whole armor of God? Well, the Bible is full of examples of why this is necessary. And one in particular is 1 Peter chapter 5. Whenever we read in 1 Peter, 8, 5, or 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. We can't overemphasize that. The devil's one purpose is to devour us, is to tear us to shreds, just as a fierce lion would tear its prey to shreds. And Peter writes, resist him, steadfast in the faith. As Christians, sometimes we, we, come, we become so leisure fair and have that attitude in our minds, do you know what, I'm a Christian and I'm all right and I'll just sort of swan through life together. But the devil is very real and he is there trying his best to steal our happiness, to steal our joy, to steal our peace, to steal the love of God within our hearts and He will attack us whenever He can. When we are most vulnerable, He comes at us. When we don't expect Him, He comes at us. And that is why Paul writes in Ephesians 6, verses 11 and 12, put on the full armor of God. It doesn't say put on half of it, put on a little bit of it, put on what you think suits you, what makes you look good. He says put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes the things the devil is planning to knock you off your feet. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, 
but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Paul is writing to the Ephesian church. He's primarily in this book saying the means are doing really well. There are areas where you could do a little bit better, but you need to be exceptionally careful because the devil will do whatever he can to take that from you. And you're not fighting against each other. You're fighting against spiritual realms. So we need to be so careful. And he also writes in the book of Romans, Romans 8, 38 and 39, the apostle Paul writes, For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither the present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor depth, nor anything in all creation can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So Paul is saying all these things will try to separate us. Death will try to separate us from Jesus. Life will try to separate us from Jesus. Angels or demons, the the devil's angels, devil's demons, will separate us from Jesus. The past, the present, the future can try to separate us from Jesus. Powers can separate us from Jesus. Anything that's high up, anything that's low down, height or depth, can separate us from Jesus. But we know that in Jesus, nothing separates us from Jesus. And Paul says we need to be so, so careful. And as a result of it, he begins this latter part of his letter by saying, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. It's an overview of why we need an armor. But an armor is so, so vital. It's so, so important before we put a toe out of bed in the morning, we should be asking the Lord to place upon us the armor of God. Get into the habit of saying it together. Lord, put on me this day the helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, belt of truth, sandals of the gospel of peace, the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of the Lord, and the shield of faith. Get into the daily routine as a believer and putting the armor of God upon us to help us through that day and ask the Lord to strap it on mighty tight. But this morning I want us to think about the helmet of salvation. And why is the helmet of salvation so important? Well, the helmet protects our heads. We think in the physical realm, we think of motorbikes and horse riding and all the things that the kids shared with us. It's there primarily to protect our minds, protect our heads, protect our brains. It's to stop us getting concussion and dazed and all those sorts of things in sports. It's to stop us from losing our lives when we're in the more extreme types of things. But in Romans chapter 8, verses 5 and 8, we read these words. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. What Paul is saying here to the Roman church is be careful of your minds. Because whenever Christ enters into our lives, He starts to transform our minds. In fact, in Romans 12, chapter 2, Paul writes a little bit more about it. He says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. Christ lives in our hearts, but it is our mind that controls our body. It is our mind that causes our whole body to work and move as it does. It is our mind that causes us to remember and also to forget It is our mind that causes us to be in good form and not such good form. I loved to, three, four months ago, whenever uh, Claire spearheaded that um, that five-day event, the five steps to mental health, she talked about it here in church. Our minds are so, so important, and we need to do everything in our power to guard our minds. And one of the ways to do that is by allowing Jesus, or perhaps the only way to do it, is by allowing Jesus to transform our minds, by renewing our minds. Because to go back to Romans 8, when Paul writes, the minds that are set on the flesh are in the spirit, but the minds that are set, sorry, the minds that are set on the spirit are of God, but the minds that are set on the flesh are not of God. 
when our minds desire, because that's where desires come from, when our mind desires to follow the things of the world, then we're far from God. But when our minds are set on following Jesus, then we become increasingly close to God. And it is in our minds whenever we begin to fathom salvation. Oh, you can't get to heaven without salvation, S-A-L-V-A-T-I-O-N. Oh, you can't get to heaven without salvation, S-A-L-V-A-T-I-O-N. Do you remember the rest of it? Shout it out loud and clear, S-A-L-V-A-T-I-O-N. Sound it out far and near. If you don't know it, it's time you did. <laughs> oh, you can't get to heaven without salvation. S-A-L-V-A-T-I-O-N. Do you know, salvation, folks, is so important because you can't get to heaven without it. And our minds begin to understand it. But the devil desires one thing, and that is to convince us in our minds that we don't have it, that we are not good enough for it that it is not necessary. And he will do everything within his power. We cannot underestimate him. He will do everything within his power to steal it from us. When we come to Jesus, as I've said earlier, we have peace in our minds. We have love in our lives. We have joy in the depths of our bodies. We have hope in our souls, all controlled from the mind. The devil wants to take it away. Romans 15, Paul writes, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust Him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So should you remember nothing else about what I've said this morning, remember this, do not let the devil steal your joy. Because when the devil steals the joy of the church, then the church has no message to proclaim. During Advent, we thought about joy as we thought of one of the candles. Do not let the devil steal our joy. Paul writes it in Ephesians 6, Stand firm. Be strong in the Lord. Put on the whole armor of God. He continually says it over and over and over again. And he says to us this morning, Take the helmet of salvation. Put it firmly on your head. Pray it. There's no harm in praying it. There's no danger in praying it. It's a good thing to pray. Why not every day this week? Pray for the next seven days. Lord, please place in my head the helmet of salvation. Protect my thoughts. Protect my movements. Protect all that I am. Protect me thinking of you so that I may focus on you. The armor of God is vital. And as we journey through this series, I hope and trust and pray that you will understand a little bit more about it, and that together we will put on the armor of God, not only in us as, a, as individuals, but on us as a church. Lord, protect the mind of the church. Protect us so that the wolf in sheep's clothing will not come amongst us to separate us to destroy us, to scatter us, but that we will, verse 10, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank You for this armor that Paul writes about and for how he encourages us to put it on us Lord, teach us the necessity of it so that we can put it on us daily. And this week, Lord, place upon each of us the helmet of salvation, protecting our minds from the thoughts of the enemy. Place upon us the breastplate of righteousness. Put around our waist the belt of truth. Put in our feet the sandals of the gospel of peace. Put in our hand the shield of faith and into the other hand the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of the Lord. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.